hello, it's Jane here. As you can see, I'm up at the plot and I'm holding a chicken. <laughs> now, if you've been following me recently, you'll know there's a reason for that, which I'll come back to later on. But this is Edith and she's happily bribed by corn in my hand. But actually, she's settled down now, you don't need it. She's very, very comfortable. Um, but yeah, it's time for a September tour. But whereas normally with a tour, I will start at the bottom greenhouse work the way right up to the polytunnel and then go into Mike's bit for a bit. There's not really that much to see. Everything for us is winding down. And to be honest, the last few weeks, we've been completely preoccupied with this little group of <laughs> tinkers. They've only given us three eggs so far. There's six of you. What's going on for goodness sake? So, um, so yeah, so what I'm going to do, I'm not going to show you every inch of the plot. I'm just going to concentrate on areas of interest. OK, so I'll show you bits and pieces that we've got going on and what we're looking forward to doing next year. And then we'll come back to this little lot later on. And all that's left in greenhouse number one now are the chilies, which I'm just letting dry, letting them dry on the plant. And then, as I've mentioned before, what I'll do is turn the plant upside down so all the remaining moisture goes into those chilies and then they will dry off absolutely beautifully. And here we have the Great Parade, which I will admit I haven't thinned out as much as I had hoped I would this year, but they are still providing tons and tons of grapes and you know what when you thin them out it gives you much much bigger um, fruit as you can imagine because they've got more room and more room to spread but look how packed that is there there's a few need to come off that is absolutely packed and if I eat that one now it's gorgeous a little bit sour, but that's how I like them. But you've got to think how you're going to use them. If you're going to eat them fresh, yeah, thin them out and you will get sweeter, bigger grapes. But for what we're going to use them for, which is hopefully wine, these are going to be a brilliant crop. Oh, they might have to go to the chickens there. The wasp nest is gone now in the fruit cage, which means we can actually get in there. I must admit the raspberries aren't where I thought they would be at this time of year, but even so, look. Not the biggest, but oh my goodness, these are gorgeous. These are polka, and I would highly recommend if you want an autumn flowering raspberry, try polka. Courgettes are pretty much done. A little bit mildewy, but you never know what you're going to find, do you? You blink. Before you know it, you've got, <laughs> you've got a marrow. Let's just have a look. Yeah, I think I've managed to get those now. So yeah, they're done for the year. I've got, I don't know how much courgette soup in the freezer. And I've got six oversized courgettes sitting on the kitchen counter waiting to be dealt with. So wish me luck. The apples haven't been great this year overall, but on this small apple tree, there has been quite a lot of scab, so they're gonna get quite a lot of TLC for next year. But if we have a look, there are actually some really quite nice apples on there and they're really, really tasty. They're just not very pretty. beans that we have left on the plant now look actually saying that they're still producing but we're tending to leave them on now to um, actually dry on the plant themselves that's not quite rattling yet but it will do as they dry out the beans start to shrink as well as the pod 
and you can feel when they're ready to pick but these will all just be left on now and they'll be used for either seed for next year or um, for winter stews. The Cosphela bean is still producing. If I just stand on the strawberries here, I don't know if you remember, but last time I said I wouldn't do a teepee again for this very reason, because they all get tangled at the top. But they are, look, it's actually still got quite a few new beans on it. But if we look up at the top here, let's have a little circle. Yeah, we've got some nice beans coming there. In fact, look at that one. That's absolutely perfect. And that is going to be eaten right now. Now, here's the thing that turns out to be a bit of a happy accident. Down this row, can you see the row of um, <laughs> debris here? We planted some radishes. Sorry, I'm still eating that bean. Um, just have a quick crop while the beans were establishing themselves. And of course, this is what happens when you forget about them. But I am a big fan in letting things go to seed because not only have the bees enjoyed these flowers, but you end up with these seed pods. And I didn't know until fairly recently that you could actually eat these. And the drier they get, that's still quite a fresh one, as you can see. Ah, oh, look, have a look at this one. Look, you can see the lumps of the seeds inside there. The drier they get, the deeper the flavour. And if you eat one of those, it's got a really mild radish flavour. And it's absolutely perfect if you want to, well, you could just throw them into salad hole, or, as we've done, use them in stir fries. And it's a really nice additional ingredient. And again, it's something that really otherwise we'd probably just throw on the compost heap. Chickens won't touch them. <laughs> I'm going to show you now. The sunflowers themselves have come to an end. But if you've never done this before, just have a go. It's really, really satisfying. If you knock off the stuff, off the top of the seeds. Look at that wealth of seeds in there. And your birds are going to absolutely love you for them. I mean, obviously you can save the seeds as well for next year. You can use them when you're cooking, you can toast them, you can roast them, you can do whatever, but just because the flower's gone doesn't mean it's stopped being useful. The lavender here, look at it. Remember when it was all glorious and swarming with bees? And now, well, let's just say it's past its best. I've left the flowers on for as long as I possibly can. I did take a small harvest um, earlier in the summer, but um, I've just left it for the bees. And well, <laughs> saying, I just haven't got around to pruning it. But what I need to do now is get it ready for next year by just taking off the dead. You don't want to, with lavender, cut into the old wood because it won't regenerate from the old wood there. But if we look, look at that. It will regenerate from something like that. I wouldn't cut, cut it that, that far back, but yeah. It'll have a good haircut and then hopefully next year it will be back to its glorious best. Same with the calendula, it's more or less done its job now. I did deadhead it for quite a while, um, but it's provided such a lot of food, such a lot of nectar for all the insect life. But what I'm going to be doing a bit later on is collecting, look at that, that's as easy as it is, collecting the seeds, quite a lot of them, I know quite a few people I want to pass them on to. Um, and just leave the last flowers um, to die off on their own. It is starting to get mildew, which it tends to at this time of year and die back a bit. So it won't be too long and that won't be cut back. That will be completely pulled up because that lump there will not come back on its own next year. But what it will have done is it will have deposited so many hundreds of seeds 
across this area <laughs> that I spent half my time actually pulling little seedlings out in the spring. So yeah, it means I don't have to sow any next spring though. Well, I left the self-seeded um, tree spinach in just to see what would happen. And <laughs> actually, <laughs> it's taller than me now. But after uh, asking around a fair bit, I discovered, and I thought it was, but it was confirmed that it's a member of the amaranth family, as you can tell really by these giveaway flowers. And so what that means is when these produce seeds, I can eat them. And not only will I be able to eat them, but the chickens will absolutely love them. So if we have a little look, in my back of here, can you see? All oh, the chickens are clucking about it already. I'm going to have quite a few seeds, I think. So that is again going to be another unexpected harvest. Good grief. that little villain. Well, I don't know if you're familiar with um, the term fur coat and no knickers. <laughs> but my main worry is that these parsnips are going to be all leaf and no roots. But I've got to say, what are they? Let's have a look. This is one of Mike's labels. Countess, Countess F1 parsnip from Premier Seeds. Okay. They have done really, really well this year. So hopefully we're going to be feasting on some of them over the winter. And we've just got the last few dribs and drabs of the tomatoes, if you like, uh, which need to come in. And then we can um, take the tomato plants down and let the chickens in for a little scratch. But we've been so, so lucky that blight has stayed out of the polytunnel. There were a few tomatoes that were a bit dodgy, so I thought we might have it, but yeah very very fortunate so next job is to come in clear the tomatoes away and probably make a whole new load of tomato sauce the blue hubbard squash oh look at these these are absolute beauties and they are delicious again recommendation for next year if you've not grown them before they store really really well and absolutely beautiful um, roasted in the winter. So yeah, grow these again. Okay, so I know they're off camera, but I'm hoping that they'll come up and say hello. I'm surrounded here by a bunch of naughty chickens. Um, and as I said earlier, yeah, this has been preoccupying us now for the last few weeks. We, we've managed to build a run, we've sorted out their hen house, we've built a little shelter for them, and uh, they don't seem at all grateful. <laughs> but they have just been hours of fun just sitting here watching them. 
I don't get anything done. You know, sometimes I pop up and I might think, oh, I've just got an hour. I'll pop up to the allotment and I'll do a small job. And they hear you coming through the gate, even though they're right at the far end of the allotment. You hear them getting excited. What can you do? You can't just ignore them. You've got to come and say hello. Before you know it, you've got one sitting on your knee. An hour goes by. So, um, so yeah, it is very lucky that it is this time of year. Although not that lucky in that they're not going to lay any eggs. And they're not going to come and sit on my knee now either. They know the camera's switched on. But yeah, it's lovely. I've got used to it so, so quickly, just having them here. Um, and as I say, we're very, very lucky because our hen house has got an automatic door closer. So it goes down. At the moment, it's around about quarter to eight at night and it's up about eight o'clock in the morning. So we know that they're really safely tucked away at night. We come and check anyway, but, but yeah, they've been our preoccupation. But other than that, it's just, every time we get to May, I say it's my favorite month of the year. And then we get to September and guess what? That's my favorite month of the year as well. It's just this shift, this absolute shift in uh, not just your weather patterns and your daylight levels, but the whole atmosphere of going into autumn. I just love it. I love it. I think there's something quite inbuilt in me that appreciates that change in nature. And in fact, someone um, was talking the other day about Liz Zorab, and she'd put in her book about she called this time of year end of summer, beginning of autumn, when you're starting to notice the changes, the pause. And I think it just sums it up beautifully, the pause. It is this pause before we start getting fully into autumn, fully into the next season, but we can still appreciate the last bits of summer. Like today, it's been so warm up here, it's clouding over now, but you know, we really make the most of it now. But, but yeah, so we have got plans for growing over winter, which I'll touch on in another video. But at the moment, it's things that, it's just like things like clearing up. So emptying the polytunnel for now, we'll be letting the chickens, like I said, we'll be letting them have a good scratch around in there um, once the tomato plants are taken out, because I think they'll like that. And it'll do the soil the world a good. Um, collecting seeds great time of year for doing that looking at and assessing what has worked what hasn't worked our corn has been I didn't show you this time but the corn has been absolutely delicious but we got like one flush of it and we got about eight or nine cobs all at once and then little bits here and there it sort of straggled off really quite quickly so I might stagger the planting next year I don't know if that would work um, what else? I'm not going to do TPs again, as I've mentioned before. I find them really annoying. I didn't make the most of the peas this year. Um, let far too many of them go to seed. We had so many on our plants. They grew really, really well and we just didn't pick them. So they just went right over. And unlike the bean seeds, I'm not going to collect the pea seeds dry and have them. Although, well, you know, I suppose I could, couldn't I? Has anyone done that? Like collected the, the peas, the dried peas? Because you get them from the shops, don't you? I don't know. I mean, they'll be, provide seed for next year, but do you eat them? Do you add them to your stews in the winter? That's a thought. But apart from that, yeah, this week or this weekend rather, we're concentrating on getting a roof over the run of the house, of the chicken house. We, um, Mike is already looking at building them a bigger behemoth coop, even though that one's absolutely fine, but we've been given a whole load of wood and he wants to make something. I'm looking at making them an extension. You can see where our concentration's been lying, can't you? So um, let's see if this one will come up. Hello. Hello. Come on. Come and say hello. Oh, it's you again. Whoa! <laughs> That's one of the dangers. It's Edith again. Well, that made you feel very secure, didn't it? Hey? Comedy gold. But uh, <laughs> yeah we can just sit here for hours and look at these and I'm probably talking about them too much and I am probably putting on far too many pictures of the chickens and their eggs and chicken related activities on all my social media so I do apologize but I'm sure the novelty will wear off but while it's still going we're making the most of it aren't we hey we really are so yeah the reason I'm a week early this year with my tour is because next week 
If you don't already know, it's the results of the Transatlantic Melon Challenge because we have got the Autumn Equinox coming up. So next week's video will be all things melon. Um, I'll put a link to the original uh, challenge earlier on. I'll put a link to that below or above or somewhere. And uh, hopefully me and Jim will be able to get together and see how the different continents have done. But uh, apart from that, I'm going to leave it there. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. I know quite a lot of you watch this on Facebook. If you do, would you mind? I think there'll be, still be a subscribe button um, under the video. Please subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. You don't have to be a member of YouTube or anything, but it just, uh, just press that button and that really, really helps. Uh, but for now, look, I can't, I can't multitask. I can't stroke a chicken and film. I'm going to go. <laughs> Have a lovely mid-September week wherever you are. Take care and I'll see you again soon. Bye.